Hello everyone. So, in the last lecture we have discussed about attenuation of shock wave. This lecture we will focus on interaction and reflection of shock waves. So, we will discuss about how um, what happens when a shock wave uh, enters from one medium to the other medium and also what happens when it uh, reflects uh, from a free surface or what happens when two shock waves interact with each other. So, first um, we will see uh, when a shock wave enters from one medium to the other medium. Let us say we have a medium A and this is the interface and this is the medium B. So, what will happen when the shock wave enters from one medium to the other medium? Uh, the pressure, shock wave velocity, density. So, these parameter will change in the other medium. So, if we write P 1 u s 1 rho 1 in this medium. So, here it will be P 2 u s 2 rho 2. The shock impedance concept we will here introduce. Shock impedance is rho naught u s like our sonic impedance. So, this is shock impedance of a medium. So, this shock impedance gives a measure of pressure at a particular particle velocity at a particular up value and this can be approximated um, as uh, rho naught c naught we can approximate rho naught c naught. C naught is the as we know sonic wave velocity <coughs> sonic wave velocity and then rho naught is the initial density. So, mm, this is we know that initial density of the medium. So, in these problems from transmission of shock waves from one medium to the other medium. So, we will be uh, using shock impedance uh, matching method. So, impedance matching technique will be useful to calculate the shock transfer from one medium to the other medium. So, this is the method um, this is a, the graphical method we will be uh, working on. So, now we will discuss two cases. Uh, case number one is transmission of shock waves from high imp uh, low impedance medium to high impedance medium transmission of shock waves from low impedance. Let us say we assume that uh, we name them that as a A to from A and to a high impedance medium. High impedance sorry high impedance medium or you can call high impedance material. So, for this case what we can do is um, for this problem we can first draw a pressure particle velocity plot. So, this is y axis is pressure and x axis is particle velocity. So, we have two mediums as um, as we have written here the low impedance medium that P u p plot 
from the experimental data so this is let's say medium one and uh, that we know that the shock impedance rho naught us will be the slope of the line at a particular pressure so what we will we told that that's the shock impedance is a measure of the pressure at a particular velocity up so if you have this pressure p1 if you have a pressure p1 so the shock impedance of this material a will uh, this uh, slope of this uh, dotted line so this will be the slope will be rho naught us that is the shock impedance of the material a so if you draw the uh, the the curve for the high 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 impedance medium higher impedance medium so this will look like this this is high impedance medium with a uh, higher slope shock impedance so now we will draw the reflected wave that should be a mirror image of the the curve a because the reflected a uh, wave will be exactly opposite um, uh, it will follow the opposite path uh, that means the variation of pressure and particle velocity uh, will be a kind of mirror image uh, to what we got for the curve A. So, how we can draw is we will draw the curve like this although it is not perfect I hope uh, you can understand this. So, so this curve the curve A and curve this one we will name them that as a AR AR so that should be kind of mirror image approximately a mirror image and it will cross the curve B and that point will be corresponding to P2 that is the uh, pressure of at medium B. AR is as you know the curve for reflected wave reflected at the interface of medium A and B this is for medium A this curve and this curve is for medium B or we can write material B. So, if we draw the pressure profile or stress profile so we will now draw the pressure or stress profile. of this um, transmission of wave. So, what we can do is at time t naught let us say we have uh, I am writing this vertical dotted line which is the impact interface at time t naught pressure pulse is this is the shock pulse uh, it has a steep shock front and the pressure will be p1 so this is the shock wave um, uh, this actually we should write that this is material 1 or medium uh, a and other side of the interface this is material b or we can write medium b so what will happen after some time at time equal to t1 this shock pulse will hit the interface will hit the interface and then at let us say time t2 so what will happen is uh, the pressure will increase as we can see here it was still p1 and here we have the pressure will little increase as you can see from our p u p plot the pressure will be p2 now so here if you can see from the above diagram this pressure here is p2 so here it is p2 and the then the original 
pulse will still be at P1. So, this is at P1 and it is important to note that the release wave we discussed in the earlier lectures about the release wave. So, this release wave will still travel towards the uh, impact interface. So, this is I will write it somewhere uh, this is the release wave I will write it somewhere here release wave this one is the release wave and so at time t3 at time t3 what will happen is um, this wave so better we will again read or this part little bit so why i have redrawn because i did not show the the reflected wave from the interface here so that i will show you so this there will be a wave which will reflect back from the interface and that will also maintain a pressure p2 so that reflected wave reflected back from the uh, interface of the low and high impedance medium so that will interact with the release wave which i have shown earlier so both of them are actually we can call them a release wave but the first one is the release wave this one is the release wave of the primary wave and the second one uh, this uh, which is traveling from right to left is a release wave i will just you know so with a arrow here so this is the release wave that is reflected back from interface from interface now what will happen these two waves will uh, interact the release wave from the primary wave and the release wave from this um, uh, the reflected from the back surface they will interfere and then this will now um, look like this with a pressure p2 so now after some time that t4 when this will meet so in this case in this case the both the release waves meet each other or both release waves uh, both the relief wave meet each other the result we is we can see uh, at uh, time t equal to t4 this will move forward in the medium b and um, so this the relief waves will move from left to right and then part of the other wave this is the result of the interaction between the both the release waves so which is p2 minus p1 the p2 minus p1 is the pressure of this part of the wave and the other part is still at pressure p2 so this is uh, results from the uh, the pressure decrease which is from p2 to uh, this p2 minus p1 it's a results uh, due to interaction of of the two release waves release waves so as you know one is release wave of the primary wave and the other one is the release wave of the uh, reflected wave back from the interface so it is important to mention here that there is a continuity of pressure at the interface so that we can see at time t equal to t2 so if you see the interface in this uh, point we can show uh, that continuity of pressure at interface that means the pressure will be p2 on both side both sides of the interface 
so that continuity um, will be maintained. So now we will um, discuss about the case number two, which is the opposite case that is transmission of shock wave from a lower impedance medium to a higher imp uh, sorry from higher impedance medium to a lower impedance medium. So we will see what happens in that case transmission of shock wave from high to low impedance material ok. So, in that case so if we want to draw a PUP diagram pressure particle velocity diagram. So, let us draw the medium A which is a high impedance has a high impedance and then we have a medium B which has low impedance. So, now if we have a a reflected wave curve which will be a mirror image of the curve at uh, for the medium a, a. So, this is let us say a r that reflected wave and then let us say this is at pressure p p 1 in the medium a and because the a r curve will cut the b curve at a point at this point. So, the pressure at the medium B will be P2. I am repeating again um, this curve AR is a is an mirror image of the curve A and it, it cuts uh, the curve B at point which is corresponding to pressure P2 and if we can have this particle velocities this is we can say that this is up2 and this is up1 in the previous case uh, sorry i did not mention i think these particle velocities are i forgot to mention here so this is up1 and up2 are the two mediums the particle velocity values here So, now in this case, so if we want to draw the pressure stress um, or pressure profile, so what we have drawn now is P U P plot, pressure U P plot, this one and then if you want to have a pressure profile or stress profile, you can call it a stress profile as well. So, what will happen is we can take this as the interface, that is the interface if, as you can see from PUP plot, this is the interface. Um, we'll continue like this. At time equal to T naught, so the pressure pulse, as a shock wave pulse, is uh, moving towards uh, um, the interface. So we have left side is medium A or material A, and the right side is material B or medium B and at time equal to T 1 this pulse will hit the interface. So, we can write even here that uh, pulse hits the interface and then T equal to T 2. So, what will happen here is at pulse um, at time t equal to t 2 what will happen is this pressure on side B or material B will be less as you know this pressure will be P 2 earlier it was P 1 which is higher than P 2 and in this side 
and this side which should be actually smaller here uh, and this side it will look like this. So, what will happen here is uh, this part of the uh, pulse will come towards the left side and the release wave is traveling towards the right side. So, you can see at the interface this interface there is a pressure continuity at the interface pressure continuity at the interface that means pressure is P2 on both the sides and this pressure is P1 the higher pressure and this is at interface P2 at interface on both sides. So, that is the pressure continuity and as you can see these two waves which is that means from um, this is the reflected wave from the interface that you can see is it does not have a uh, stiff front. So, that is actually not exactly a shock wave it has an inclined front and the release wave of the primary wave which is traveling from left to right and these uh, inclined front is traveling from right to left. So, these will interact. So, what will happen um, this will when it will interact it will form a tension So, it will form when these waves will interact it will form a tensile wave. So, at this point it will have a tensile wave. So, that is why I am drawing below that reference line. So, this will be tensile wave and that tensile wave will be at time T4 this will propagate what will happen is. So, we have the pressure P2 we should not have drawn the pressure P2 in the front it should be showing at the pressure level uh, or we cannot I think we we'll cut this here. So, the that, that tensile pressure tensile pulse will will propagate at the material A. So, that tensile pulse or that tension can lead to spalling if the amplitude is sufficient sufficiently high sufficiently high so So, that we we can see now. So, what happened in this second case? The first case we did not see a tension behavior or spalling uh, kind of behavior. In this case, what happened? Transmission from um, shock wave from higher impedance material that is A to a lower impedance material that is B. So, it shows that um, when the release wave from the uh, interface interacts with the release wave of the primary wave. Uh, that can interact to form a uh, tension and that tension um, tensile wave uh, if sufficiently high amplitude can cause spalling and that uh, means it can lead to failure. So, we will uh, quickly see a problem involving uh, this uh, wave uh, uh, transmission from one medium to the other medium. Uh, Let us assume this we need to the problem is let us say we need to calculate the pressure the pressure generated when a let us say uh, some 50 giga Pascal pressure pulse is uh, traveling from material A to material B. 
so what will happen here is we have a material B and material A so we will consider both the case first case is let us say from uh, A to B and in the second case we will uh, assume the other case let the second case is from B to A and this is the interface this is the interface so we can draw the PUP diagram that is pressure particle velocity diagram from experimental data UP diagram PUP so what we can do is we can have this curves let us say this is curve A and this is curve B when the material travels in the case A from A to B let us say we will draw a uh, curve which is mirror image of A we will draw a curve mirror image of A it is something like this mirror image these two this one and the other one although my diagrams are not very perfect but you can assume it to be mirror image so that means um, that means these um, this is the first case which is from um, A to B uh, A to B transmission and this is the reflected um, wave so in that case what happened um, the the pressure which was a 50 gigapascal 50 gigapascal now cuts the medium this curve reflected wave curve cuts the medium at this point let us assume that this is uh, 30 gigapascal so what will happen is um, the pressure which is initially at 50 gigapascal here will be now uh, in the medium it will be 30 gigapascal in the other case what we can do is we can draw the draw the reflected curve as something like this so it, it will be reflected curve will be mirror image of B uh, we will draw a mirror image of B so the mirror image of B is this reflected curve or we can even name both of them what we can do is let us say we can reflect it first for the first case we can give the reflect a r as name and this is let us say we can give b r as the name so now what will happen this is the second case from b to a so that pressure should be same 50 gigapascal sorry this is uh, a little bit higher uh, this would have been at 50 gigapascal so what will happen is this reflected curve will cut through this a curve at this point and this pressure let us say this pressure is uh, something like 75 gigapascal 75 gigapascal now what happens so this in this case if you have a 50 gigapascal pressure from uh, medium b which is entering medium a then pressure will increase because it is uh, the you now 75 gigapascal at low impedance this one is low impedance and then medium a has high impedance so in the same figure we can show both the transmissions from uh, medium a to b and b to a so now i think it is uh, clear from this um, um, problem then we will talk about uh, superposition of two waves that is interaction of two waves so what will happen to uh, shock waves interact with each other let us assume at time t equal to t naught we have two shock waves approaching each other and we can have let us the pressure is p1 and 
when we will interact encounter each other this will be look like something like this so these two are release wave and at after interacting it will um, this will reflect back so at time t2 time t2 this we will look like this and then at time t3 this will uh, be separated and this will both the waves will go back away from each other this is at time t3 so what we can do in this case this is actually what we are talking about the collision of two shock waves and we can see they have um, shock waves they have parallel fronts that you can see these fronts are parallel to each other so now what we can do is we need to find the pressure p2 how we can find the pressure p2 uh, we need to add the particle velocity of both the waves let us assume both have um, same particle velocity then we will add the particle velocity of both the waves and then correspondingly we will um, obtain the equivalent pressure um, which is uh, the corresponding to the addition of both the particle velocity. So, uh, so let us make it clear from this P U P diagram. So, we have this P U P plot and let us assume this as U P 1 at pressure P 1. So, pressure P 1 particle velocity U P 1 and we assume that uh, the two waves have same velocity. So, this wave and uh, this wave has same particle velocity, same u p. So, what will happen is then the u p of this um, the resultant uh, wave the superposition of two shock waves. superposition of two shock waves ok. So, when it superimpose, so what will happen if they have both uh, same U p. So, we can write the at superposition we have a value twice U p 1 and correspondingly what is the pressure? we will find it out that is in this case let us say p2 and that is what uh, so then we can find that the pressure after superposition is p2 so that is how we can um, calculate but we should understand that p2 is not equal to twice p1 but u p2 which is this one u p2 is equal to twice u p1 so, and we use this equivalent pressure P2 uh, from this plot. So, uh, again I am repeating we should not be confused that the P2 is equal to 2 P1, it is exact actually not equal to 2 P1. So, it is uh, from uh, the particle velocity um, addition we, we can find the equivalent pressure. Now, we will talk about reflection of shock wave. At, interf uh, at free surface so this is as we can understand uh, from the earlier elastic wave calculations as well so this is a special case of special case of
transmission of shock wave from material A to B, material A to material B, material B um, and the, we assume that the shock impedance of material B is 0, shock impedance of B is 0. So, that is a special case. The, similarly, we did it for elastic wave propagation. So, in this reflection of shock wave, we can consider two cases. First case is a square pulse and second case is triangular pulse. So, we will first talk about the square pulse. So, to understand this, um, so what we will do is to understand this reflection of shock wave at a free surface, what we can do is we can draw a PUP diagram, PUP diagram and then we have this curve for material A is this one and then curve for material B is the a horizontal line which is uh, exactly the x axis. So, that line is our line uh, curve for B material B and if you draw a mirror image of A which is the reflected uh, wave reflected wave. So, that is a uh, uh, is a mirror image. So, that we will write as A R that at uh, uh, the inter uh, at uh, medium A uh, the pressure is P 1 and the corresponding particle velocity is U P 1. So, as it is a mirror image A R is a mirror image of A. So, this a reflected curve will cut the curve B at UP, uh, UP2 or we can write twice UP1 because of the symmetry of the AR and R curve. So, AR curve um, will cut through the curve B at twice P, UP1. So, if you draw the pressure profile, uh, pressure profile, uh, what will happen is you have the free surface, I will write a vertical line free surface this one is the free surface free surface so at time t naught this pressure pulse will travel towards the free surface at time t1 the pressure pulse will hit the uh, free surface and you know that we have a release wave following the um, the the primary wave and then this release wave um, will interact now with the reflected wave because at time t2 uh, the um, wave will reflect uh, back. So, what we can see is here the wave will reflect back that is also release wave from the uh, free surface and then release wave of the primary um, uh, wave is from left to right hand side and then this will come towards each other and at time t equal to t 3. So, what will happen it will generate a uh, tensile wave because of the interaction of the both the release waves it will have a tensile wave. So, this is tension and these tension can lead to spalling if the um, uh, amplitude is quite high sufficiently high then it can lead to spalling or uh, very quickly we can show the particle velocity if we draw the particle velocity profile here. So, what we can show is at time. So, if you have the free surface and at time t naught time t naught this uh, the particle velocity profile uh, will look like this and then at time t equal to t 1 the particle velocity when it 
hits the free surface hits the free surface let's say this is up profile and then particle velocity at t equal to t2 as you know this will be now uh, it's a high velocity up here and twice up here because from this we can see that this is uh, from p up plot this is twice up and then um, so this will uh, uh, the reflected wave both the release wave will interact and uh, at time t3 so we'll uh, uh, get the result of this uh, interaction so this is time t3 so basically this will reflection at the free surface um, we can uh, cause spalling if the tension has sufficiently high uh, amplitude thank you